Ah, oh, hello there, everybody. Is everybody well today? <laughs> I am so delighted to hear it. And me? Oh, yes, still vertical and still above the grass. <laughs> and what's the weather like today, you ask? Good question. I've just been having a look at satellite picture and it's showing there's cloud over most of the UK today. It's not a very heavy cloud, it's a thin cloud. Some sunshine is still able to get through but it is providing a sort of a dull look to the world. But one thing is certain, the wind is blowing consistently from the west and across the UK. Temperatures. Wow, we are a sizzling 11 degrees at the minute. <laughs> That's Celsius, of course, and that makes it 52 degrees in Fahrenheit. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go out and try to work on my tan. Not today, anyway. <laughs> So, where are we going to go to today? Well, a YouTuber by the name of Envy wrote me. He said, Hello, Father. I have been enjoying these videos recently. Would you like to fly from East Midlands, which is EGNX, to Edinburgh, which is EGPH? And said, It's a nice little flight up the UK. Wow. Well, yes, it is. As a matter of fact, that flight route is going to take, take it pretty much over the top of where I live. It's just going to be a little bit to the west of me because I'm a, a little bit to the east of the Pennine chains and the route generally is either over the top or slightly to the west when going north to Edinburgh. But yes, Yes, I think that would be a great route. Now, one of the things that uh, I started thinking about when I uh, started to plan this particular flight was I went back and looked at some old pictures that a pilot pal of mine who flies for Ryanair out, and he's based, by the way, in East Midlands, and... Uh, when I was putting the simulator together for the first time, this is a few years ago now, I had questions about measurements and positions, you know, what angles and things like that. And so he took a lot of photographs from his cockpit to show me exactly what his cockpit looked like so that I could replicate it as exact as I could right here in my little spare bedroom. So these are some of the photographs that he sent. Yes, the A4 paper that you see there was to help me with measurements. See, I know what the dimensions of an A4 sheet of paper is, so I was able to take that and use that for measurement purposes. But this is a real cockpit that he was flying. Some of you have mentioned that I use the term self-loading cargo. <laughs> yes, it is a funny term, isn't it? As a matter of fact, it was my pilot pal David who coined that phrase to me. He was sitting in the cockpit at uh, East Midlands. He was at stand 30, stand 30. And uh, here's a picture of uh, what he could see outside of his window. 
and he sent the photograph and he said, oh, and by the way, here comes the self-loading cargo. <laughs> so I'm going to be close to Stan 30. I don't think Stan 30 is available on the simulator, but if it is, I will. But if not, then I'll be somewhere close. <laughs> Right now, I did put in some excellent scenery for this. The scenery for East Midlands, that's E-G-N-X, is made by Gary at UK 2000 Sceneries. He also was the one who designed and made the scenery for Edinburgh E-G-P-H. So that's Gary at UK 2000 that I have to thank for the excellent sceneries that we have today. Right. Well, if you're ready, then I think we should go into pre-flight and check out the weather. What do you think? Well, here we are in windy.com. Now, I did check and to try to find out if there were any commercial flights that go between East Midlands and Edinburgh, and there are none. So we are going to have to make our own route today. Now here you can see East Midlands Airport right here and the wind is coming pretty much straight from the west. Now the airport is a straight east-west runway so there's not going to be any doubt today about the runway that will be in use. Up here you can see Nottingham Yes, famous for the Sheriff of Nottingham and, of course, Robin Hood and all the rest of that. All right, let's have a look. The wind, it says here, is 250 degrees at 11 knots, visibility 10 kilometers. Ah, there are some uh, clouds at 2,100 feet. So that's where the level of the cloud is at all over Britain at the moment. Temperature 11 degrees, dew point 5, Q &H 1017, just a little bit above standard. But it is VFR. And here's the runways. This one is 09 and this one is 27. Here you can see this is the main motorway, the M1, just to the side there. And Castle Donnington village, uh, village is right here. So this is probably where we will be departing. And I told you that he was at Stand 30. Well, Stand 30 is this one right here, this particular angle. I'm not sure if this is available in the simulator software. Sometimes they have deliberately parked aircraft there. You know how that goes. So if that's the case, then I'm going to be parked over here at stand 40. So as close as I can. Right, we'll have a look now at Edinburgh. Here you can see the wind is still coming pretty strong, still east to west, uh, west to east, I should say. And Looking at this, it's wind 250, 11 knots, visibility 10 kilometers, clouds 1900 feet. Temperature is the same and Q&H is 1012. Pretty much standard. Looking at the, but it's showing minimum VFRs. And here you can see the the runway in all likelihood will be coming in on runway 24 which is up here okay i think we've got the picture the looks fairly standard today in weather not much uh, question about the wind or the conditions so here we are in sim brief let's make our flight plan we are ryanair and we are 186 we're departing from EGNX and we're going to go to EGPH and it's given us Manchester as an alternate airport should things go pear-shaped. 
There's the aircraft type. We are a 737-800. There's the cruise profile is six. There's the registration. Schedule flight time is one hour 15. And here it's got confirmation, departure runway 27 and arrival on 24. I'm going to leave the altitude out. We'll allow Simbrief to give us the best altitude for weight and conditions. We are full, of course. And the flight has one ton of, what is it? Of course, champagne and caviar. <laughs> and here is the route. And it looks like we're using the Trent 2 North departure and the MP1 Echo arrival. Route distance is 206 nautical miles. And having a look at that route, here you can see the departures coming out here and then going pretty much straight up the backbone of England. Now the Pennines pretty much run a la a a along this line here. And I, I live to the right side of this. So I'll be able to look down on the right side and check out the house as I fly over the top. Here's the destination, Edinburgh, and this route here is showing our route to Manchester right here, should anything go amiss, which of course it could, but since we are Ryanair 186, nothing like that would dare happen. All right, we'll save the flight and then we'll generate the flight plan. All right, here's the, the flight plan. Ah, now this is interesting. This is showing a cruise altitude of 24,000 feet. And there's the block fuel airtime is 43 minutes. But do you see on here, here, we have a little bump. So we may have an initial cruise of 24,000 feet, but we do rise to 28,000 feet at this point. No remarks, it says. Here we are. Information is Ryanair 186. And there's the cruise altitude and it shows the bump in altitude right there. EGCC, that's our alternate. We're going to know, need to know cost index. We're going to need to know the average wind and speed. Here's our block fuel, which we'll need to make sure that it is all on board. Reserves are right here. And there's the trip and taxi. No tankering recommended. On the descent, we're going to need to know this information for flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet. We're going to need to know it for flight level 150, which is 15,000 feet, and for flight level 100, which is 10,000 feet. This is the wind direction and the wind speed in knots. As you can see, we've got some pretty stiff winds blowing up there. So let's have a look at that and see what we've got to deal with. This right here, this is the wind direction and speed. And as you can see, we have a bit of a tailwind going up there. Oh, I do like tailwinds. I do indeed. Looking at the cruise profile, view, vertical profile, here you can see the departure at EGNX going up. And at this particular point at Pole Hill goes up to Ribble across the top to 28,000 feet and then descent all the way down into EGPH. That's Edinburgh in Scotland. All right, let's go into Navigraph charts. We click flights do new flights from SimBrief 
and we use the latest one that we've just made. Now we'll put the charts that we need for reference at the bottom. We're going to need to know the airport, so there's the airport. And we'll need to know also the stands. In fact, let's have a look at those stands. Now here you can see stand 30. This is where uh, my pal David was taking the photograph from and we'll have another look at that photograph. But if we can't get there, then I'm going to be right over here at stand 40. So as close as I could get to the photograph so that you could see what it looks like. Using the TNT to North departure and I will pin that to the bottom. And let's see, there are some restrictions here. Going to have to watch out for. Departure here, this particular point is between three and 6,000, between five and 6,000, 6,000 feet until we get to Trent. So there are some restrictions for uh, departure and for speed. Interesting, okay. Maximum speed is 250 knots below flight level 100. Right, let's just have a look now at all of the charts for our destination. We're going to need to know the airport and we'll need the parking stands. We're coming in on runway 24, so that will be the category three, uh, which is also, and let's bring this up. We're going to need not only to put the ILS in, but we'll also need to put in this uh, non-directional beacon here, 341, that's EDN, in order to make everything work for the approach. So there's the localizer, final approach, and airport elevation is 136. Here's ATIS, there's the tower, And category 3A, which is ours, the decision height is 50 feet, and we'll be using the radio barometer on that. So this will be our route going in and swinging around. All right. So, and then we've got the, let's have a look at this. And there's the route coming in there's maximum speed at that point and tartan maximum speed is 230 and need to be at flight level 70 7000 feet at this point so i'll pin that okay and looking back at the this chart we need now to just join up the dots as they say so we're with that approach we're coming in on ILS runway 24 with a TLA and there's the TLA and that brings us all the way around as you can see look at that isn't that nice and smooth yes I know that there is a uh, a chunk down here that's not included, but we will be editing out the parts that we don't need in order to join this to make our swing around. Right, I think we are ready now to jump in the cockpit and get everything ready. Ah, oh, there you are. Do come on in and take your seat. Don't forget, buckle up. Now, where are we parked? I'm parked here at stand 40. 
And the reason for that is because just directly ahead of me is a Hercules C-130 parked in stand 30, which is where this picture was taken. Can you see that? So this is as close as I can get to where my friend David took the picture from his real Ryanair aircraft and sent it on to me. So let me show you what the airport looks like and it's really very, very good. Right, I'm looking out here over to the left of the aircraft and there you can see the active runway. Well, there's only one runway. And swinging around. Over there is Ratcliffe Power Station, which is a very important uh, way, um, not waypoint, but visual reference for coming in. And <laughs> I should mention just a little bit of trivia. Just out over here, there's a village that has the name of Gotham. How about that? England has its own Gotham City. <laughs> but I don't know if Batman is there. I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, swinging around. There you can see is Stand 30. And that's where the Hercules C-130 is actually parked right now. And so that's the reason why it wasn't available to us for choice. And then stand 33 is where this one is parked. So that one was out. But you can see over there, there's a number of Ryanair aircraft. It's Thomas Cook as well. And swinging around, there's the terminal building the extension where the passengers come up and then what they do is they cross over and board the aircraft and here you can see I've got a couple of 737 noses sticking out just to my right. So there's the airport and where we are parked and you can see the weather it is Partially cloudy, but it should be good flying weather today. Right, let's get ourselves started then. I've got the fuel already on board. Everything is set. And we also have all of the cargo on board, which of course is the champagne and the caviar. I did go around, I did kick the tires, checked all of that, and made sure everything was right. I even cleaned all the windows. Aren't you impressed as how clean these windows are? Look at, I mean, look at those windows, how clean they are. It's almost like they're not there. <laughs> all right, let's turn on the battery. We have uh, 26 volts. So I'm going to turn on now the fuel pumps and we'll start the APU. Yes, this is a really actual, actually well-detailed airport scenery. And this is made by Gary at UK 2000 Sceneries. He was the one who uh, designed all of this and did a beautiful job. My frame rate is 22, 23. And considering that I am running three very large 4K monitors at 4K even. And I've got that kind of detail and I've still got 22, 23 frames per second. That is very good. So P3D and UK2000, it works hand in hand to give me very good resolution. Ah. There we go. I now have 115 volts. And with 115 volts, I can turn on the IRS, which of course is to get our GPS started. I can turn on the galley. That way they can start to brew up some tea for us. 
There's the emergency exit lights, no smoking, fasten seat belts. Then I'm going to turn on the left and the right window heat since we have such clean windows I want to make sure they're kept nice and warm. <laughs> and yes, I've turned on the probes, but I always do that. And now I'm turning on the electrical hydraulic pumps. Forward service hatch light is on and the equipment light is on. That's because they're the stairs and they are down to allow our self-loading cargo to board. And they will come up this ramp here till they get to this point and then they cross over and then they board. And by the way, that is exactly how it's done at East Midlands. It's really good. Over here, I'm going to turn on the APU bleed, turn on the fans and the packs. And listen. There it is. There's that rush of air that's now putting out a little bit of heat because the outside air temperature, even though it's a day like today, it is only 13 degrees outside, about 54 Fahrenheit. Not all that particularly warm. And then I'll turn on the steady light to let the ground crew know that we're in here and we are ready now to program the FMC. Of course, one of the things that we need to do is we need to check that the navigation data is correct and active and that there are no program problems either. So then we go into initialization. Our starting point is EGNX. And we are at gate 40, so I'll put 40 in here. And it is in the database, it comes up with this. Now once I put this like that, it goes into the temporary. And then I click on that. That sets then our aircraft's starting point for all of the calculations it needs to make for the flight. Now I go to the route, and we're of course EGNX is the starting point. Our destination is EG. PH. We're Ryanair, so that means we are RYR and we are 186. Alright, I go to next page and then we put in the route as it came out of the Simbri. So our first point is TNT, so I put in TNT, TNT, and it's the top one, there it is, see Trent. And then we take the November 57, so November 57, and that will take us to Pol, P-O-L, P-O-L, that's Pole Hill by the way. Then we take the UN 601, so UN 601, and that will take us then to INPIP, I-N-P-I-P. -I and that's it. And activate, execute. Now I'm going to go to the fix, I'm going to put in E-G-P-H for our destination and then we want a four mile circle we want a ten mile circle and a thirty mile circle that appears then on our screens go to descent go to forecast transition level in the UK is set by ATC but transition altitude is 6,000 feet and we'll put that in in just a little bit. But we are going to need to get the information in for the three altitudes that we looked at earlier, which of course is 200, 150, and 100, which is 10,000 feet. 
The Q and H at our destination is 1013, which is barometric standard. Very good on that. Now the speed and direction of the air at 20,000 feet is 204 at 57. So 204 at 57. At 15,000 feet it is 206 at 47. 206 at 47. And at 10,000 feet it is 216.23. So 216 and 23 and execute that. Now we need to listen now to ATC and find out what the active is. I'm suspecting it is going to be runway 27 but we need to make sure about that. So that is 128 decimal 22. So 128 decimal 22. East Midland, Airport Information, Delta 1131, one, Zulu, wind 260 at 8, visibility greater than 20 miles, sky condition 2400, scatter temperature 132.4, altimeter 1017, landing and departing, runway 27, DFR aircraft say direction of flight, all aircraft read back hold short instructions, advise controller on initial contact you have, Delta. Well, we have Delta. And it is saying that runway 27 is on operation. But what we're going to do is we're going to get our clearance just to make sure. So we're departing to the north, so I'll request clearance departure. East Midlands, ground, <coughs> Ryanair 186, ready to taxi north, departure with Delta. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short at runway 27, using taxiway November Alpha, contact tower on 124.0 when ready. Taxi, hold short, runway 27, via taxiway, November Alpha, Ryanair 186. Well, we are cleared now to runway 27, so I'm going to put in 27, and we are using, of course, the TNT 2 North departure. Go into departure and arrivals at our destination, we're looking at ILS 24, and the impact one echo arrival with a TLA transition and execute that. Now we go to legs and we're going to go and check to make sure that our flight route is good. So here you can see the chart as it normally looks. This is the screen as it normally looks. I'm switching now to plan and this way, when I click through each of the steps, it will center on each of the waypoints. So I'm going through each of the waypoints now, all the way, looking for any discontinuity. So far, so good. And here's up. Now, this is where we have the first one, so I'm going to bring this one up and then I'm going to bring it all the way around and look at that. There it is. There's our route all the way onto the final. So we have a good route. Click back to map. Now I'm going to click on to weather here and put the data on. I'm going to put terrain on your side and we'll bring the data on and now I'll turn on TCAS so it is set up and ready RTO switch is on now we need to go into the route and let's perform the initialization we have 5897 kilograms of fuel on board our reserves is going to be 3,071 kilograms. The trip and tax is 2,155. That makes 5,226 or 5.2. So I'll put 5.2 in that. Reserves 3.1. Cost index is 6. Double click and it calculates 
I'm going to set our cruise altitude as 24,000. The cruise wind, average wind, is 213 at 44. So 213 at 44. Transition altitude, as I said earlier, is 6,000 feet in the UK, so I'm leaving that as it is. Go to the N1 limit. 13 degrees outside, so we will take the 13 and flaps are going to be 10. Center of gravity, by clicking that it gives us 24% and the trim, this is what we put on the trim wheel is 4.75. One click on each of these gives us the values for V1, rotate, and take off. Okay, so now I'm going to put in 24,000 up here, which is our initial cruising altitude. And I'll put it in up here also. Our, the elevation at our destination is 136 so the nearest since these are in blocks of 50 the nearest landing altitude to set is 150 now this of course is for pressurization we're departing on runway 27 so therefore the heading is going to be 268 so 268 on the course heading And I'll do this one. And I'll do yours too. 268. And the Mac is 145. All right, looking good so far. Your damper is on. Flight continuity light has gone off. So we'll put the flight directors on and I push the VNAV and the LNAV button and we do have green lights on both so that is good. So I'll arm that and we'll arm the VOR1 on both of these as well. Now I'm going to switch to the barometer to radio and I'm going to add 50 to the radio altimeter here so that when we get to our destination that will give us the minimums well all of our self-loading cargo has boarded so I'm bringing up the stairs and closing the hatch right we are ready to do our pushback now when we do do a pushback we need to go back, our nose to the left and our tail to the right because we will need to go out here and then down the taxiway to get to the active runway which is down over there. By the way, the motorway, the M1 motorway is just off the other end of that runway. Alright, let's do the check. Fuel is on board. Check. Windows all locked. <laughs> Seat belt signs are all on, door lights are out, MCP has been programmed and checked, takeoff thrust has been done, CDU pre flight completed, rudder air alarm trim is set, taxi takeoff briefing we've done, anti collision light is now going on. All right, I've now activated the Navigraph charts and you can see that right over here to my right okay we are set to do our pushback cockpit to ground go ahead we've been cleared for pushback and start they want the tail to our right copy that ready to push tail to the right parking brakes release please Parking brake is released. 
Now, which engine would you like to start today? Number Pressure one or number two? Oh, you'd like to start number one? All right. As soon as we get the pushback, I'm going to turn off the packs now so that the air from the compressors in the APU can start to spin. So I'm switching now to generator one up here and I'm switching to number one here. The start valve has opened and here you can see the N2 is beginning to wind up very nicely. When this gets to 24, I'm going to introduce the fuel. And 21, 2, 3, and there it is. Fuel is going in. I'm now going to look for the engine gas temperature to ignite, and it is, it's coming up very nicely. I'll look for the low oil pressure light to go out. It did, and we should hear the engines ignite in just a moment. There, they've kicked in. Now I'm going to look for 115 volts appearing up here, and it has. So I'm switching to generator 2 and turning on the engine start for engine number 2. Push back complete. Parking brake set. Parking brake is set. The brake set. Start valve has opened. Here you can see the N2 is winding up. When it gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. There it is. Steering pin is pulled. Watch for the salute release from guidance on your right. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. And we can see the engines are cranking up. Looking for the low oil pressure light to go out, and it has. Everything is coming up very nicely. We're getting a good start there. Now I'm looking, and there's the engine, it's ignited, and I'm looking for 115 volts, which we have. As soon as this tick mark clears, which means that we have stabilized balance engines, which we've got that. I'm now switching to the generators on the main engines, turning on the air conditioning packs again, turning off the APU bleed, and I'm turning off the APU. Now I'm turning on the three taxi lights. I'm going to flaps 10. And I've got to verify the takeoff speeds once again and make that small adjustment. And the flaps are climbing, we're doing all right. So checklist, generators are on, probe heat is on, anti-ice not required, isolation valve correct, engine stop levers idle, detent, flight deck door is closed and locked, recall is checked, flight controls check, flaps we have green light, stabilizer trim is correct, auto brake, RTO, speed brake lever down, detent, ground equipment, is all clear. No kamikaze is in sight. Right, we're ready now to do our taxi. Oh, and by the way, I did a recalibration of my steering tiller, which was causing me problems on the last video I did, if you notice that. So I'm hoping that this time it will now be correct. All right, give ourselves a little boost here to get ourselves started. And we'll move over to the center line. Well, we've got to look left, look right, make sure nothing is coming. And this is the Alpha Taxiway here. Look at the detail on that. Plenty of aircraft parked out here. There you can see the Pegasus aircraft parked at stand 33. And there you can see the Hercules 
is right there in stand 30. That's where my friend David was when he took the picture. East Midland, ground Pacifica 8343 IFR2, Kilby, ready to copy. And there, there's the detail of all the airports and the main terminal building in the background. Look at all of that. And we've just had an aircraft that has landed, so hopefully it won't interfere with us. And there's plenty of Ryanair here, there's Fly B there. Coming up on the cargo terminal, one of them, there are two here. Here you can see UPS and the Royal Mail, they come in here. DHL are on the other cargo terminal, which is just at the other end of the airport. Very busy airport for cargo is this, apart from it being a UPS and a DHL hub, it's also a hub of course for Ryanair.
takeoff briefing is correct, we've done the bleeds, engine start switch is continuous, cabin is secure, we are set and are now starting the clock. Okay, let's taxi out and line ourselves up on the runway. Okay, attendance secure for takeoff. By the way, I just thought I'd pause at a moment. Now this photograph was taken by my pilot pal David on this runway and you can see what the typical conditions were that day was fog. But that's the real runway of EGNX at East Midland. Alright, we're in position. So I'm going to advance the fuel to M1. And push the toga button, full power. And we're rolling.
So if you want to go into the back and have a nice seat in one of those very comfortable first class seats that we've got, then I'll give you a shout as soon as we're on the downside and approach into Edinburgh. Okay? I'll see you in a bit. Too bad outside. 
outside air temperature right now at this altitude of 4,500 feet is 5 degrees Celsius. Should be a little bit warmer on the ground, but not much. It's still, it's still springtime in Scotland. Here we go. Now we're turning on to base, so I'm going to switch this to our final approach of 241. There we go. And we are now on base. runway 24. I don't have the airport in sight yet but I know it's out there. We'll probably see it when we make our turn onto final. When we get onto the localizer then we should have a good view of it at that point. Should I do it? 
go to this old line and there we go. Now we'll clean up. Okay, APU is on and crew is released. Now the switches are off. Okay, everything is looking good. Clean up is ready. Now we'll move on over to the stand. And we'll bring the flaps up. There we go. this you know really delightful there's the aircraft getting ready to take off is Edinburgh EGPH. The scenery is here is also made by Gary at UK 2000. Very, very detailed scenery indeed. There's that aircraft taking off now. And here's the, the scenery. Look how detailed this is. This is really quite good, isn't it? Very well put together scenery, this. Very detailed. Plenty of aircraft in the terminal building there. And there's even Ryanair. Yes. Well, we'll find ourselves an empty stand and we'll pull into it in just a moment. over there. We'll do fine over there. to the right of that easy jet over there. Or, yes, we'll do this one. Number six. Right next to this British Airways. Your damper is off. It's 
switching everything off. Seatbelt signs are off. Stairs are open and going down. The door is opening. Okay, and fuel off, APU off, battery off, and shutdown is complete. Well, we made it. We made it into Edinburgh. I hope that you enjoyed the flight. I hope that you also enjoyed that champagne and caviar. Delightful stuff, isn't it? So, I'm glad that you made the suggestion and I'm very happy to have made the flight for you. I hope that you'll come back and fly with us again. And everyone else, thank you for flying Ryanair 186 and we'll see you next week. Bye.